Hi, and welcome to Make It Fun. My goal for this video is to create a Reader's Digest version of how to create a display for your front yard. So let's dive right in and get started. The first step in the process is to come up with an idea. This year I chose to go with Cars from Disney. So in Google I put in a search of Disney's Cars Christmas coloring page. And the reason I always put in coloring page is because it has very distinct lines that's really easy to trace and really easy to fill in with the paint. Once I found the images I liked, I pulled them into Photoshop and clipped them all together and kind of came up with a visual of what the uh, display pieces would look like together. Once I have my images selected, I print each one of them out on a transparency. The first step in the actual build is to clean the surface of your coroplast. As you can probably tell, I am reusing an old piece of coroplast that I haven't been able to use in many, many years. So whether you're using an old piece of coroplast like I am, or if you have a brand new piece of coroplast, you have to clean the surface. The reason is, uh, during the manufacturing process of coroplast, uh, it leaves a, an oily residue on the surface, and if you don't clean the surface, your paint is not going to stick. I use a product called Naphtha. Uh, you can also use paint thinner or probably any other type of degreaser that you might have around the house, but you have to get that oily surface cleaned. Once you have the surface nice and clean, uh, the next thing you want to do is paint the surface of the Coroplast white. Even if it's brand new and it's white, you want to paint it white. There are several reasons you want to paint the Coroplast white, but since we're trying to make this fast, I'll stick with the main one. In order to be able to draw onto the Coroplast, you need to paint it white so that you can see your pencil markings. If you use a pencil on the Coroplast, you're not going to be able to see it. When I paint the surface of the Coroplast, I use a flat latex exterior white paint. I found the easiest thing to do is to take a sponge roller, in this case I'm using a 4 inch sponge roller, and just rolling the uh, flat white latex paint onto the Coroplast. Once the paint on your Coroplast has dried, it's time to start drawing. And I use the term drawing rather loosely. Although I could draw it if I wanted to, it just takes a whole lot of time doing freehand work. So what I do is use the transparencies that I created earlier, and I have an old time projector that I put the transparencies onto, and I throw the image up onto the coroplast, which I have placed up against the wall. One thing to take note of is make sure that you get the sizing right when you are putting your image onto your coroplast. You want to make sure that all of your figures look in proportion to all of the other figures. Once you're satisfied with the size of your image, it's nothing but a simple task of taking your pencil and tracing all the lines that are projected up onto the coroplast. Once you get all your pencil lines drawn, you'll want to take a black permanent magic marker and go over all your pencil lines. The next step in the process is to cut out your figure. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're cutting them out is you might want to leave a little bit of space around some of the smaller, narrower um, portions of your figures because you don't want them flopping around in the wind. So uh, leave a little background around those narrower parts and you can see in the images of uh, some of my figures uh, what I have done and you will eventually be painting that those extra parts with a dark gray color and those parts will just fade into nothingness once you have them outside at night with a spotlight shining on it. To cut out the Coroplast I use a jigsaw with a fine tooth metal cutting blade that I've inserted into the saw. I found that uh, the metal cutting blade gives me the smoothest edge on the Coroplast. After you have your pieces cut out, the next thing to do is to make the frame uh, that you will attach the Coroplast to. Making a wooden frame to attach your piece of Coroplast to 
uh, is simple to do, but a very necessary part. It gives rigidity to the coroplast so that you can stand it up in your yard and uh, hopefully not have it blow over in the wind. I make my wooden frames out of pressure treated lumber. I used to buy two by two uh, pieces of lumber at the big box store, but those got to be a little bit ridiculous in price. So instead of buying those, I usually now buy a two by six and cut it down into three pieces that are a little bit over an inch uh, square. Obviously, I've sped up the video in order to uh, save a little bit of time, but in constructing the frame for each piece, I start out with a piece of lumber that goes across the bottom of the entire width of the character, and then I build up from there. I use simple butt joints for all of the joinery on the frames, and over the years, it's held up just great, and I haven't had any trouble. I normally use two inch decking screws and I pre-drill holes so that I don't split out my lumber. I have discovered uh, that it is better to over engineer the frame than it is to under engineer. So if I have a larger piece I will put braces in the corners or I'll add another uh, cross piece uh, in the middle of the figure just to give a little bit more stability. After I finish making the frame, I attach the coroplast to the frame using one and a quarter inch decking screws and quarter inch washers. The easiest way to accomplish this is to uh, position the coroplast on your frame and then put a bright light behind it. That way the light kind of shows through the coroplast and you can see exactly where the frame is. Just take a screw and a washer and screw it right through the core plast into the wooden frame. Uh, I usually put anywhere from 10 to 15 screws and washers on uh, each figure just depending on how large it is. One other thing to keep in mind when you are uh, screwing the core plast onto the frame is try to keep the screws out of an area where you're going to have to draw over it with a magic marker. It's very difficult to do that and it's just much easier to stay away from those magic marker lines. Your Coroplast figure is now attached to the wooden frame and it's time to bring this character to life with a little bit of paint. This isn't a video in teaching you how to paint but I'll try to come up with a few uh, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to pass along. The first and most important tip I can give you is to get some flat exterior latex paint. When I'm purchasing my paint I don't go to the paint store and buy the best stuff, the most expensive stuff that I can find. I go to the big box store and I find the cheapest exterior latex paint that I can find. When you first buy your paints, uh, you'll probably want to get the primary colors, blue, yellow, and red, and from those three colors you can mix up just about anything else. But I would also recommend that you get some black paint and some brown paint. Uh, then with those five colors, you can pretty much mix up anything else you might want. If you're gonna be doing a lot of a certain color, let's say orange or purple, you might want to go ahead and buy you a quart of those colors as well. If you want to, you can buy empty cans at the box stores, or uh, you can save your plastic jars from peanut butter or jelly or um, hazelnut spread or something like that. Save those, clean them out really good, and you can mix uh, different color paints in those and then just screw the lid back on, and that paint should last you for several years. Almost all of your colors are going to take at least two coats. Some of them might take three coats, but hopefully you can get by with just two coats. Just take your time and keep the paint in between the lines, and don't worry about going over some of the lines that are in the middle of whatever color you're painting, because after it dries, you can take the magic marker and go back over the line again before you put the next coat of paint on. That way, uh, you're definitely going to be able to see the line when you after you put the second coat of paint on. 
Once you finish painting the entire character with two coats or possibly three coats of paint, uh, you'll want to take your magic marker and go back over all the outlines that you have on the entire piece. I've included a few pictures so that you can see what some of the characters look like after I have completed them. At some point I'll go back in and add some shading to all of the characters, but that's not a necessity. I just think it makes the characters look a little bit nicer. The final step in this project is how to put the character up in your yard. To hold my pieces in place, I use electric conduit that is fairly inexpensive and easily available at your big box stores. I buy them in 10 foot lengths and then I'll cut them down to uh, shorter lengths as I need them. Since the electrical conduit is metal, I put a metal cutting blade on my miter saw and use that to cut a pointed edge on one end and a flat surface on the other end. Pointed end just makes it a little bit easier to drive the stakes into the ground. If you don't have a miter saw with a metal cutting blade available, you could use a hacksaw or a grinder with a metal cutting disc. Once you have your piece placed where you want it to be, take one of your pieces of the electrical conduit and drive it down into the ground. Normally I would drive the conduit about a foot into the ground, but since this is for demonstration purposes, I just drove it in as far as I needed to. To pound your stakes into the ground, you can use a pounding tool like I have, or you can use a sledgehammer. Once you have your first stake pounded into the ground, position your second stake and pound it into the ground as well. Once you have your stakes in place, take a piece of galvanized hanger strap and loop it around the stake and attach it to the frame of the piece by using an inch and a quarter decking screw. I always place two pieces of the strapping material onto each stake, one at the top and one at the bottom. That keeps the bottom of the figure from sliding out. Now obviously I didn't drive the stakes into the ground as far as I usually do, but one thing you want to make sure of is to make sure that the stakes do not stick out above the top of the figure. Well, this video ended up being a little bit longer than I hoped it would be, but I uh, felt it necessary to include some details that would help you out. Hope you found it helpful, and uh, good luck in making your own display. If you would, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or any comments, leave them below, and I'll try to get back in touch with you just as soon as I can. Thanks!